All right. Well, welcome everybody to the first ever Basketball and Brew podcast produced by Jude McLaren, and I'm your host, Dan Miller. Uh, we're excited to take you through uh, basketball and bring on a lot of guests over this next, we want to do about eight or 10 of these, and, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, first of all, we just want to start off by thanking our sponsors. Uh, we have Pie Society right here in San Marcos. Excellent vibe, excellent pizza, great place to grab a beer uh, and enjoy a good time at Pie Society. And then we have Zelix Ice House, excellent happy hour, great time. Uh, we, we just want to shout out Zelix and Pie Society for joining the basketball podcast. We're very honored tonight to have our first guest uh, from University of Houston, uh, Kellen Sampson. Assistant coach Kellen Sampson has been a coach at U of H since 2014 and helped to guide the Cougars to four NCAA tournaments, three American Conference championships, back-to-back -back Elite Eights, and of course, a Final Four in 2021. Coach Sampson, welcome to the podcast. I'm, I'm, I'm humbled to be a guest tonight, been a big fan of, of you and your program for uh, a lot of years and, and excited to talk a little hoops tonight. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate you, man, coming on so much. And, and the first thing is I have to ask when I, when I told some people we have Coach Sampson on, the, the number one question that people ask is, how do you get your guys to play so hard? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the probably the easy response is I didn't, you know, I didn't know they had a choice. Um, mm -hmm. if, if you're in this pursuit for winning championships, you're in this pursuit to, to go after something special. It, it costs what it costs. You know, you, you, you can't show up to, to the grocery store and, and, and really want to, uh, a, a gallon of milk and, and come up a little short. Well, that's their effort. That's, that's how hard you play. Uh, you, to, to be great and to have a chance to hang banners and to cut down nets and and have a chance to to have the confetti fall on your face look it it there, there's a certain level of competition and a certain level of competitiveness that you got to have um we've been really fortunate that that we've had guys that wanted to to be led to to those kinds of moments um they they want to be uh they want to know how to get there, and we're really blessed that uh, you know our head coach is, certainly knows the, the GPS and the roadmap to get there, and yes. and our guys let us coach them every day. I think it starts with that more more so than anything else is, is we recruit guys that uh, you know they know if they come to Houston you're, you're going to get coached, you're going to get coached hard, you're, you're going to get pushed to places that you can't get to by yourself. Um, and then they, they let us coach them every day. They let us put our paws on them and, and, and stretch them and mold them and, and bend them to, 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 to a championship team. And, um, you know, their families and their circles, they, they allow us to do the same. And they, they, you know, they allow us to have awesome retention and get mm -hmm. guys that, that come. You know, we're not <clears> – <throat> we built a program which allows us to, to have um, minimal – input on, on on our team and i think it's really important is we spend a lot of time in program building therefore we don't have to start with a brand new team every single year um right our freshmen become sophomores and they get better our sophomores become juniors and they get better and you know in this past year we started three fifth year seniors and and they took us to an awesome place but you know a lot of those guys were with us for for a long time and their their growth and their development of getting better and better um you know that that's how we get them to play so hard is is they understand what the program is. Yep, I, I love that, Coach. And something you said there, you touched on the leadership from the guys that have been there sophomore, junior, senior year. We call that generational leadership. You know, it, it yep. just continues. And and great programs have guys leading, not just the coaches. You guys have great coaches, but you're. I see it when I watch you guys play. The leadership in in your tight huddles. I love that. Yep. Um, and so I guess that a word that, that to go with that toughness is culture. And when I see your program and, and I, I hear about your program, you just you can feel the, the U of H culture. So can you kind of talk about that? that yeah, I, I think that like what's really important is you talk about culture in the recruiting process. You know, <clears throat> obviously, mm -hmm. and I think it's really important to know that look, we're not coaching a single player whose, whose goals, whose dreams, whose aspirations um, isn't to get to the NBA. Um, I think it's really right. important for, for for high school and college coaches to understand is that every single day you you individually might be living your your dream, but your players aren't, and that's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. their, their their dream is to to play on TNT and to have Kenny and Charles and the gang talk mm -hmm. about them. Um, right, and that's awesome. Right. Don't don't run from it. Embrace yep. it. Um, but 
during the process, while we are 1,000 percent 50-50, that that our our job and our is to try to help facilitate your dream. Um, we're going to talk about the importance of, of playing to the culture and that get playing to the culture and buying into what <clears throat> the program has been and been about is a awesome vehicle to get to your dreams. Um, right. It's not a single NBA scouter or, or GM or decision maker that isn't going to naturally gravitate to the hardest playing guy in the gym. Yep. You know, uh, there's no such thing as, is uh, playing too hard. There's no such thing as being too great of a competitor. There's no such thing as, as giving too much or caring too much about your teammate. You know, the, 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 those, those sorts of intangibles and attributes are impossible. And uh, talking and, and encouraging those things in the recruiting process make it a heck of a lot easier um, when they get to campus. Look, we're going to acknowledge that you want to get to the NBA and you want to have a chance to chase awesome individual accolades and, and success. Totally get that. And I think it's really, really important that there's a there is a time and there's a space for them to 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 be individuals. Uh, but that comes after our team got desires and our team goals and our team needs and uh, ha- have been met and, and trying to get guys to understand that the, the, the quickest and most direct way to having individual successes is, is, is through team success. Right. Oh, I love that. And then coach, how, how would you say that affects recruiting? Because there's so many talented guys in Texas and of course a, yeah. a program like yours recruits national. Um, how, is there times when you look at somebody and be like, they can play the, you know, in our league and we like them, but maybe they don't fit our culture. Yeah, no, hundred percent. That happens every year. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think that, that, that honestly, it's probably where, where our program has evolved and grown the most is we've gotten really comfortable with acknowledging that we're not for everybody and Mm -hmm. everybody for us. Yeah. Uh, But I also think that's the importance of having a culture. That's the importance of having an identity is knowing who you are, Therefore, you 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 minimize your mistakes. Look, recruiting is very so very much an inexact science, mm-hmm. uh, you know. But you can minimize mistakes, and you can minimize, um, you know, the times that that you're a little bit outside your lane if you know who you are, right. and you know what works for you, and you know this the, the kinds of people that you want to interact with and be around every single day. And then, look also look what does their circle look like. You know, it, right. it does their, you know, evaluating their circle and the, and the people and the decision makers in their circle is, look, is he going to fight? Is he, is he going to be willing to hang in there with us during hard times? Um, you know, there, there is no, the, we, we talk to our guys about this all the time, but the first step to, to, to success is, is failure. Mm. You, you can't possibly uh, expect to have awesome success without going through some failure. And while you're going through some individual failure, your circle's got to be really great, right? You know, and everything's hunky dory and dandelions. Um, you know, your 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 circle's got to do a great job of humbling you. Yep. When you're going through some 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 tough moments and some adverse moments, your circle's got to do a great job of of believing in you, but also believing where you're at. And if there is that, if there is a little bit of questions or concerns, uh, they've you've got to be with people that that are willing to have real, honest, direct conversations um and and that way we can get the car back on the road and so i think all all those things go into the evaluation process they go into inviting a young person into our program um you know i think we we've we've done a great job of of uh, recruiting the sorts of young people that want to be with us for for a year but also want to be with us for two three and four years and that's how our program has been able to elevate right and that's a reflection of uh, all your success in winning. Um, question for you about the circle. How does it feel to do this with your father? I mean, that's pretty <laughs> special, man. I mean, you know, that's your circle, you know, it, yeah. is family. And to be able to go to a Final Four, Elite Eight, the run you have, do it for the city of Houston with your father. Yeah. Come on, man. To tell me a no, little bit about man. that. So I was a really, really bad basketball player. I was terrible. <laughs> um, and I went... F- I, I had to work my absolute ass off to go from obscurity to mediocrity. Um, and that was a hell of an accomplishment for me. <laughs> I, got, right. I, I had to really, really improve to become bad. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, begin, being a coach was always a realistic goal and dream. And I felt like, you know, if, 
you know, I loved basketball and I loved every aspect of it, but I, you know, I was just extremely limited on, on the kind of player I could be. My grandfather was a high school coach, mm -hmm. North Carolina, right? A legend. North Carolina, yep, yeah. yep, high school hall of fame. And, yep. uh, he was, uh, certainly one of my first heroes, my, my, my first best friend. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, and I saw the impact that, that he had on the community and I knew I, that's what I wanted. I got, I loved, I loved that. And I loved that, that people called him coach and, the, and the, right. how he helped people and how he was such a central figure in their life. And obviously uh, my dad, um, I saw the way his players adored him and they revered him the way you know, he handled his assistant coaches and the way that, that, you know, everybody was working towards a common goal. And, you know, I was not one of those guys that my dream was the NBA. I was really realistic. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I had a father and grandfather who was really honest with me. <laughs> it doesn't need to be your dream right. goal. I could right. be, um, in a different <laughs> life, but you know, they sat me down at a pretty young ages that look, um, this is what coaching is. This is what coaching is about. And it, at, at a really young age, I wanted to be my dad's assistant coach. Right. Um, that was something that, that I, I, I set out a path to do, um, you know, when I was nine, ten years old, um, there's a when I was growing up, we had a basketball in our basement. We had one of those Fisher Price hoops and stuff. And um, you know, I, I put on my Sunday clothes, my Easter suit I got one year, and I put it on. And I didn't play; I coached. I was oh wow! Three years old, and yeah. I was on the sideline, and I was tossing around, and I was barking out instructions, and and I took my jacket off just the way I'd seen my dad do it, and um, you know. That, that's where my mind was. That's where my heart was for a long time. And then, you know, uh, every day after school from the time I was probably a first grader until, man, at least high school, um, either my mom or a manager picked me up and, look, I went straight to the office or I went straight to his practice. You know, I never man. went home. And, um, I mean, I can't tell you how many countless homework assignments I did at a scores table. Uh, wow. while practice was going on or how many times I got yelled at to stop dribbling the damn ball <laughs> um, while he was trying to do something. But, and so uh, to kind of bring it all home to be able to now be on his staff and to be able to um, share this journey with him. And then my sister mm -hmm. is, is on our staff and, and uh, you know, the guys that, you know, Hollis Price and Qantas White, I've known uh, Hollis Price since I was 12 and I've known Qantas White since I was 14. And so to be, uh, have a lifelong relationship with those guys. I mean, they're, they're like brothers to me. I mean, literally, right. they've been, they've been in my life a whole heck of a lot longer than they weren't. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, a lot of ways what we've done is Camelot and, um, I know it's going to end it at some point, you know, all, all good things do it one way or the other, but, um, I don't know if I'll have a stretch of my career that I will look back and enjoy as much as we're, we're, we're on right now. And, Man. um, you know, people ask me all the time when I think my dad's going to retire or nonsense. I said, look, if he retires, he'd be his family less. We're all here. <laughs> right, right. He sees us every day. Yep. And I, sometimes I have to explain that to, like, new staff members if they come in. and said, look, coach has no hobbies. There is no – this is family. Kind of yeah, thing. right. You know, he has to go home to get away from family. You're right, right. <laughs> and so, um, you know, this, we, we really are doing life's work. You know, my, I've been fortunate enough to have certain – yeah, you know, head coaching opportunity mm -hmm. inquiries. Um, sure. And my wife does a great job every year. She she just reminds me, you got your rest of your your career, you got the rest of your life to, to be a head coach. You only got a short while to be with your dad. Is it, yep. is it a, an opportunity that that's worth you know missing out on being with your dad every single day? And, yeah. You know, the answer's no. Yeah. I think the Cougar fans are very happy your wife tells you that also <laughs> no. for the for now and for the future. Um, that's awesome. You know, and, and I think too, that, that your players benefit from that a lot, you know, just seeing your family, seeing the love, seeing the closeness you have and, um, just that, that family atmosphere, but how your dad is, you know, he's, he, he's the man, he's the CEO of the operation yep. and it's, yep. it's, it's awesome to see from afar and, and to get to know you a little bit and just see how you all work is really cool. No, it's, uh, it's been, you know, one of the things that has been our secret sauce has been our stability, but mm -hmm. also continuity as a staff. Yeah, uh, there's four of us that have been from day one, minute one. We walk, we all walked in the office together, and there was four of the. There's four of us still uh, still remain from that first staff, wow. and then uh, four more of us um, that have been together six years or more. And so there's eight of us total that we're, we're walking into year six together. Um, 
which, you know, when you walk into a young person's home and you walk into, you start talking to them at that recruitment, look, I'm the person who's recruiting is also going to coach you. Yep. You know, the ideas and the things that are discussed in your recruitment, look, it's also going to be the same voice that's going to coach you. And, and when we say we're going to hold you accountable, and we're going to coach you hard and we're going to have tough moments. Um, you know, we, we say it with sincerity, but we also say it with awesome conviction and belief that we're going to be here to help you get through it. You know, we're right. going to be here with you every step of the way. Uh, you're never isolated. You're never on your own. Uh, we're going to wrap our arms around you and, and love you and, and hug you. And, and we're not going to let you fail. Uh, but you can't walk around it. You can't run over it. You, you got to walk through that door. Um, but being able to do that as a, as a staff, um, and we're, we're going to walk through that door with you. I think it's meant a lot to a lot of guys over the years. Yep. Yeah. That continuity is, is so good that you see in your staff. And, um, a question for you that I know my coaching friends want me to ask. So I'm going to add, talk about rebounding and I want you to talk sure. about rebounding. So, yeah. you know, you guys are a great rebounding team, both offensively and defensively. And, you know, I love the way you guys go so hard and compete for the offensive glass, but yet your transition defense never suffers. So I guess it's a two part question, but my first question is how often do you do rebounding drills? Or is it something that kind of comes out in the five on five play or, or, you know, how in in practice, what does it look like? And then do you recruit rebounding? I mean, do you seek out, go get it guys, or do you teach them to be the go get it guys like that? hundred percent. We recruit it. Mm. Like, you know, there, there are certain guys that are for us and there are certain guys that aren't, you know, for instance, we knew from day one, minute one, J one Roberts was a take for us all day. Mm. And there were so many guys that, Thought he was a little undersized. He's, his skill set's not really a four, and then he's a little undersized as a five, and they didn't quite know what to do with him. The, not only did we know that he was, man, perfect for us, um, we sold out for him, and we eliminated a lot of guys in that recruiting process so we could get our hands on, on, on a J1 Roberts, who, you know, he averaged a double double at the Peach Jam and led it in block shots and is, mm-hmm. is just a natural rebounder where Tough. there's some other parts of his games that, that, Look, he's had to really, really work hard at, and he's and he's still coming and evolving as he goes. But um, that's the first piece: is you, you you can't recruit soft kids and hope that they get better at rebounding. Mm. Um, you know, it goes into kind of the same token as you don't recruit a. You can make a a bad shooter a better shooter, but it's really hard to make a bad shooter a good shooter. Sure, yeah. I can't make a bad rebounder a good rebounder. Um, you know, I can make a bad rebounder a better rebounder, and, mm-hmm. but. You can't emphasize <clears throat> toughness, grit, rebounding, nastiness, all those sorts of things. If you, if they don't walk through the door with some bare minimum level of stuff, grit. Uh, yep. You know, I can't. As as good as coaches, he can't turn uh, chicken shit into chicken salad. So You're right. You right. you you, you got to have you got to have a little something. And then I think that uh, uh, the second thing is just a it, it's a three hundred sixty five day your commitment to it. Uh, we have a really crystal clear idea of how we're going to win basketball games. And, um, you know, there's a lot of non-negotiables along the way that, that, that goes towards winning it. it, co- it Again, it goes back to recruiting. It's, you can't have this idea of how you're going to recruit it and then, uh, or how you're going to win. And then you look up and all your, you know, your, your three, fours and fives, the best things they do is shoot threes mm-hmm. or the best things that they do is, is all, you know, tuxedo type things, you're, yep. you're going to, you're, you're going to lead, it's going to lead to frustration yep. at the end of the day for you and, and, and for your player. So you better recruit it at a high level. Um, <clears throat> you, you're never going to be awesome at everything. So I think as a coach, you've got to pick and choose what you really want to be good at. And um, I would say this, and, and I've had to learn this the hard way, but you're going to be good at whatever your head coach believes in. Right. It's, my, my job is not to set the course and and determine what we're going to be great at. That that's the head coach's job. It's my job is to get on board with it and to re, reinforce and to drive home the message and re, reinforce and drive home uh, the example that he sets every day. Coach Sampson wants to defend it. He wants to rebound it, and he's going to take care of the basketball. Those are our mm-hmm. we call it our holy trinity. Mm-hmm. Every single time our bus pulls into an arena. Our, our our main objective is that we, we want to defend you, we're going to mm-hmm. rebound, and we're going to take care of it. Yep. And if we can do those three things, we, we feel like we're going to win games. Look, that's his ways. Yep. You know, and it's my job is to every single day reinforce that and be kind of the, the uh, an echo for sometimes when he's not around. 
and that's Qantas's job and Hollis's job and Casey Beard's job. Um, you know, that's our senior leadership council's job, you know, teaching the young ones. Um, you know, as far as like our offensive rebounding, it's one of the things that, you know, the best, the best transition defensive drill I have is our offensive rebound. <laughs> right. And it's kind of one of those things is look, you know, and we almost giggle or laugh, but you know, in the preceding two or three days that you play Houston, everybody's throwing their tough guy, their, their, yeah. their man days, their, uh, whatever, yep. you know, blue collar drills, because yep. they know that, look, you're going to be in a, in a fist fight with us. Yep. The football pads are coming out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're not yep. emphasizing transition offense. these days. Yep. Everybody's locked into rebounding. Everybody's yep. locked into finishing and squeezing every single position, uh, with, with, with a rebound. Well, in a, in a, in a nutshell, you, you, you automatically are clipping yourselves of transition opportunities. Um, and so, you know, when you're really, really good at your offensive rebounding, teams aren't going to run on you. you know, they're petrified of what, of what you're going to do to them on the glass. Um, you know, and, and I think that that's kind of the way, the way we look at it is our, our strengths got to be better than our weakness. We are susceptible right. to transition defense. Absolutely. Um, and, and I think that, look, it goes back to if your head coach really believes in limiting easy shots and easy baskets and things like that, then look, look your sacrifice probably is going to be your offensive rebounding. Right. If your head coach wants to play at the tips of his toes and come over his skis and be nasty and be aggressive and, and, and avalanche people on the glass, then look, you're going to value second chance points more so than what you're giving up transition defense. And, and, you know, that's just how we, we built our program and that's our methodology and, and kind of how we're going to try to win games, but that's the head coach's job. The assistant right. coach can't have that kind of ideological power and be any good at it. You know, there's a million and a half ways to defend a ball screen, right? right. You can drop, you can ice, you can hard hedge, you can go under, look, you're going to be good at whatever the head coach decides to emphasize, you know? And, and I think that that, that, that's always my advice to assistant coaches is look, if, if you don't like it, get another job. Right. Or right. present a counter argument in a way that makes sense that maybe your head coach can bite, really bite down on and get behind and support. But if your head coach isn't supportive of it, it's never going to work. Mm -hmm. I don't care. If you, you might be right in the end, but that's a battle you're going to lose, and that's a war he's, he is going to win. And, right. and, and I think that's really, really important to, for, for assistant coaches all the time. Is your job is, is, is to – you know, challenge the way your head coach thinks. But once he has heard it and he's made his decision, your job is to get on board with it. That's what Absolutely. you say. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I've been fortunate to have some great assistant coaches who, who follow right into that. And, uh, and they make you look good as a head coach. Uh, yeah. as a, you know, and, and your guys awesome. can feel it and, yep. and they know that there's not a lot of discord. There's not, a, there's not, there's no trust yep. issues. They can yep. feel the conviction and, Look, yep. you can wrong your way into a right if everybody's on the same page and and everybody's on board. You know, we talk a lot about it with our pick and roll coverage. Mm -hmm. Look, there's five different ways. Maybe we'll we'll, we'll cover. We'll call it. We'll call a, a coverage call. I may not agree with the way our guys covered it, but if you're loud, you're early, you're aggressive. You can make the wrong coverage right. Yep. Especially if you do it with with awesome energy, awesome conviction, effort, um, yep. and, and we can survive. Yep. We can survive the possession, you yep. know. And and I think, but but you've got to do it with with awesome assertiveness and awesome aggression and conviction, and 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 that's the way we kind of run our our program. Yep, love it, love it, Coach. Uh, staying with your your defense, um, you know, uh, I we we have some of your terminology with the MIG and the crackback, and you yep. know, it's it's great stuff. And obviously, it takes all five guys locked in on defense, you know, to have a great defensive team. You know, you have one mm -hmm. guy that's off, it doesn't understand what's going on, or doesn't cover up the MIG if the MIG leaves. But can yep. you talk about what is the hardest thing to get the new players? to learn the Houston defense? Is it, you know, is it help side? Is it your ball screen? Is it all of it? Are some guys just, if they come from great programs, maybe it's not that hard. I think the hardest thing to do is to get them to, to understand how hard you have to play. Mm, yes. You know, yeah. I think the hardest thing is to get them up to speed with is, is yeah. the competitiveness, the nastiness, the aggressiveness, and that it is a 
look, it's possession in, possession out. It's dr- every bounce, every fight, uh, every pass is a fist fight uh, for for your life. Yep. Um, you know, and getting them to understand that that you know we're not conceding anything. We want to win every single dribble. You know, we want to challenge every single pass. Mm. Um, and and getting them to understand that there, there's there's a difference between playing hard and competing. Right. You know, my kids play hard every single day. Right. Um, I got a five year old and a two year old. They play really hard. They play their ass off with Barbies <laughs> and, and and monster trucks. Right. I, <clears throat> but my kids don't compete. That's a totally different level of commitment. And that's a totally different level of conviction that you got to have every single day. You know, I think it's our jobs as, as, as coaches um, is to get our kids to understand the, that, that everything is, is a competition. Everything is competitive. Everything uh, is, is you, you're, you're, it's an absolute dog fist fight, um, you know, for, 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 for survival. It's so right. hard to win a game so unbelievably difficult to beat another team look he's trying to win too mm-hmm. he he's out there and his, his goal and his intention they did scattering report they got a system they work on stuff they got a whole offensive game plan in to try to beat you and it's it's our job as coaches is to get our guys to understand that it is competition and look your best way to win is to out fight them and out compete them and if you can do those things you know look everything else falls into place Right. Um, you know, um, now can you get them to, to play that hard and be that competitive and be that nasty and be that aggressive and play in concert with the other four and uh, play with great awareness, you know, uh, because of the way our system is, is that, you know, as a defender, you have to constantly be collecting information. You know, you have to constantly be assessing uh, where's the ball, where's your man, uh, you know, it's a little bit like a second baseman, you know, runner on first, I'm playing second balls hit to me. What do I do? Well, right. what's the score? You know, how many outs are there? Uh, look, you got to constantly collect information. Yeah. And that's probably what we, we, we get under our new guys all about is what, what information did you collect? You know, you're late because you didn't, you weren't proactive. You didn't collect your information while you're in help site. You gave into your fatigue. Uh, maybe you're, you're, you're so preoccupied with what your guy's doing that you're being a selfish defender and you didn't realize that, look, you also have your brothers. You have responsibilities to your, your brother. You know, look, you've got a shooter. Everybody knows you've got a shooter. Great. Look, you still have, you still have, have to be the MIG. Mm-hmm. And getting them to understand that, that that is a form of selfishness is running all the way up to the popcorn stand with your man. Wow. Look, great. Your man didn't score, but, but our team got scored on. Right. Do, do you understand that? Do you understand the gravity and, 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 and why that's a, that's a problem moving forward. And if they don't understand that, then, then, um, then look, we haven't done our job B- bottom line. You know, if they don't understand why, why that's an issue, then, then I haven't done my job as, as a coach get, getting them to understand how we win. Right. Right. That's great stuff, coach. And, and that's that, uh, thing we talk about a lot of times we'll, we'll call it, uh, with our teams over the years, I said a million dollar possessions. If we had a million dollars right here sitting down and you had to get a stop, how would you play? And they all ex- play extremely hard. Of course. Uh, now coach, uh, it, we really do. We call them university of Houston possessions. We say you got to play like U of H. <laughs> so you, you can tell your dad that one because we really Thank do. You. Oh, man, and, I mean, it. yeah, I'm it's totally true coach. It we'll say we need a U of H possession right here. Um, coach, can you talk a little bit about um, the leadership circle you mentioned? Is that upperclassmen yeah. or how do you do small groups with assistant coaches or what do you do for your leadership circle? Sure. You know, one thing about it is you can elect a captain, but you can't elect your leaders, you know, and, mm. and, and we, you know, Dejan Giroux, former player of ours was a great example is that I thought his second year was his junior year. Uh, he was a leader in a negative way in that, you know, there was always drama with him or there was always something. And he drove the locker room and he drove it regardless of, of who we t- tabbed as a captain or who, regardless of who we, uh, regardless of who was speaking, he was the leader. Um, <clears throat> and I think that it's really important is, is your guys will tell you who the leader is. You just have to, you know, you just have to listen to them. Um, and, 
once they tell you, look, that's you form your leadership circle based off of that. Who who are guys following? Certain guys have a have a have an electric magnetism about them. Um, and I used to say this about Dejan is he is the energy of every room he walks in. Hmm. Uh, if he's in a great mood, moods the the the, the, the room is going to be awesome. If he's in a bad mood, guys are going to walk on eggshells and guys are going to be a little uneasy and, and be questioning and curious as to why he's in a poor mood. You know, you flip the switch his senior year he, that we couldn't have had a better leader, and we go to a Final Four. He was locked in. He was engaged. He was personable. He was selfless. He was constantly looking out and 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 being a, a giver. And so when you form your leadership circle, your or your your leadership council, you very rarely, you know, yeah, you'd love it for it to be the the guy that's the hardest worker. You'd love for it to be, um, you know, the guy that's the first one in, the last one out. Um, but if it happens to be a guy that, uh, you know, if, if the leader happens to be the wrong guy, look, you got to embrace that too, and you got to, you know, you know, we talk, you know, my dad talks all the time about the five C's of coaching: uh, competence, competitiveness uh character competition but he said look the most important c you can have in coaching uh you know is confrontation if you're not a if if you live in fear of confronting your best player your team is destined to underachieve mm. uh there is the, the, the most important c in coaching is confrontation, confrontation. Being able to confront problems nose to nose head on right between the eyes and address them um okay. and and that you know, that's where your leadership structure is. Um, you know, we've got, we've had a lot of guys that, you know, I would not name them a captain, but they're the leader of the team and I better, and you can, you can coach many through one. Uh, if you can confront him, if you can get him and get his skis pointed in the right direction, you, you, you got a chance to, to really, really have a, have a terrific player led team. Right. Uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to be a graduate assistant in 2009 uh, for at Oklahoma. Uh, Taylor Griffin was the All-American boy next door, did everything right, checked every box, and, and it's one of my best friends to this day. The, the leader on that team was his brother, Blake. <laughs> what happened you now, and Blake was not ready to be a leader. Blake was not, didn't want to be one, didn't, but – Taylor could get done whatever Taylor wanted to get done because all he had to do was get Blake to co-sign it. Mm. And once Blake co-signed it, away we went, went to an elite yep. eight. Yep. Um, and I think that's where you look at your, your, your internal leadership structure. And sometimes coaches roll their eyes or they shake their head. Oh man, he can't be the leader. Look, you're fighting yourself and you're spending too much time spinning your wheels, trying to get other guys to step up and be a leader. Look, confront the asshole in yep. the, the day. Yeah. You know, don't 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 be afraid to coach him and coach him hard. And if he and then however he responds to that, react accordingly. Yep. Yep. I love it, coach. And, and that confrontation part, I think that's what Pop was so good at. Your dad's so good at. You know, yep. not babying Tim Duncan showed all the other guys, you know, what's going on. You Absolutely. Know? I, I, love, I wrote that down, coach. I love that. Um Coach practices. You know, mm -hmm. I, I know the intensity is so high uh, at U of H for practice. Um, how does it progress throughout the year? So if I would, if I was to come in and watch a practice in October, would it look a little different than a practice in February? Cause maybe you have some guys out injured yeah. or you're protecting guys or, or just, sure. can you talk about practice a little bit? So I, I would say that, um, where we get from where we, where we get such a jump and where we get such an advantage on, on a lot of programs is what we do in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, and that we're really blessed and that, that coach has what we call our core four um, and that we're going to really, really work day in, day out. We're going to work at four things. We're going to try to be really good at a few things uh, and then build towards something. Um, so June, July, August, all the way from, you know, we call, you know, what we would tab, uh, we get real creative here and we call it the summer. But what we call <laughs> summer workouts, you know, we're going to really, really work on our core four until we get to boot camp. Boot camp starts or preseason conditioning, and that's the um, uh, the week before Labor Day, Labor Day week, and that goes all the way up till training camp. Training camp for us runs from uh, you know starting six six uh, six weeks out from our first game, uh, and the idea is that we're going to have our core four all the way installed. Uh, okay. Position defense, our monsters, uh, rebounding, and then just play after play spacing. You know, we're not we really don't try to reinvent the wheel. We don't try to. 
uh, we're going to get really, really good at a small amount of things. Um, and so really the, the most tough, gritty, nasty, competitive, um, and we're going to get after it starting June 6th, and then we're going to run that all the way till really when practice starts in games. Okay. And, and that's, a, that's a heavy, heavy install period. You know, we're, mm-hmm. we probably, we probably uh, do more teaching, more stop correcting. Let's get it right from the months of June all the way to September, uh, all the way through the start of training camp. Um, and then once training camp hits, look, we're, we're still nose to the grind. We're still hitting the, the pedal to the metal. You know, it's, it's, you know, we laugh and say, I don't care if you're tired in October. You ain't got a game. Right. What am I saving your legs for? Right. You know, coach, I need my legs for tomorrow. Look, no, you want your legs for tomorrow. Yeah. You don't need them. Yep. You know, what you need them for is, is, is come game night. Look, I need you to have fresh legs to jump up and rock into some, rock into some jump shots. <laughs> you don't need them and. Don't hit them in October, boss. Huh. Right. This is where we're putting in the the we're putting everything into our toolbox. If we have to have loose ball drill or charge drill or your all that stuff, if we're still doing that in February. Yeah. We're, we're not having a very good year. Right. No, because because once you get to January, February, once you get to conference play, it's about prep. You know. Right. What do we got to What do we got to put in? What do we got to install? What do we got to fine tune and sharpen? in order to beat our next opponent, because we already know who we are, right? Exactly. We know exactly, you know, our goal when we is, is, you know, when we get to games, um, you, know, you know, nothing gets you ready for games quite like games. Right. But we're ready to beat another team because we have complete control out of us. It's like in the weight room. You know, the first thing you don't do is reach over and start trying to move the 100-pound dumbbell. Oh, you, you do body weight stuff. You work on you, you work on being able to control and move your body first. And then you work on being able to move and control weights outside of you. Well, you know, from June until you know the start of October, we're gonna work on us and focus really deep and go deep dive into us. And that's you know, you mentioned terminology, you know, that's getting them accustomed to, to terminology and getting everybody speaking the same language. Mm-hmm. Um, let's get let's make sure that everybody um, you know, if, if I say that, that, Hey, we're going to black a blue, I, I don't need to, I, I don't need for everybody to look at me. Like I just spoke Mandarin, um, <laughs> you know, everybody needs to know what that means. You know, if I say that we're going to, um, you know, fight, you know, three quarter to white the post, you know, all, all, as the passes in flight, look, we're in our monster. Look, everybody's got to know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And that means a lot of school sessions. That might be a lot of film sessions. That might be a lot of um, terminology sessions one on one with with our new guys and just getting everybody up to speed. It's really hard to play pickup with our guys because they they run our defensive system every single day, right? Uh, and so here, here our new guys walk in and they're playing open gym or pickup with our guys. And you know if there's a side pick and roll and we decide to blue it, our bigs are going to yell blue 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 guards. You better know what the hell you're doing or. You're, or look, your team's going to get beat seven nothing real quick. You know, right. now you're gonna have older guys fussing at you because you know, you know, you can't execute a pick and roll. And then now, look, you may find yourself sitting on the wall. <laughs> That's how you have a championship level team. Hey, yes. coach, what does blue mean? Yeah, look, we, you better pick this thing up, or you're not even going to be able to play open gym with our guys. Right. Um, and so, uh, I think it, it, you know, if you do that part right. Look, by the time you get to February, you're just trying to beat somebody else. You know? Yep. And we talk about this all the time, but you know, you find winning when you eliminate losing. Right. You, know, you find winning when you eliminate losing. Like that. You eliminate losing. You have complete mastery over you. Yep. You know, you're if if you if you're patient and if your your opponent will beat himself. Um, and that's the kind of the way that we, we, we try to, you know, eliminate losing by being great at being the University of Houston. Hmm. Yeah. You know? And, and it's kind of way we, we approach our, our June through October. I love that. I love that, Coach. I, when I was at Letourneau, a Division three school, we could not start until October 15th in Division three, And it, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, it's, so it's a different idea. Uh, yep. And, and I'm appreciative of being back at the 6A high school level because now we, we can have summer workouts. And, but, you know, so that year-round uh, have your hands on your guys is important. 
Um, Absolutely. But at, so at Laterno in Division Three, you had to go extremely hard in October, and then you know throw a lot in, but go extremely hard, but pull back a lot. Of course, in January, Feb- February for that fresh legs, like you said, fresh minds, fresh legs. Um, question, Coach, uh, is there a drill that for coaches out there who will watch this podcast that is U of H drill? I mean, I know your shell drill is so good and so important. Mm. Um, you know, is there something that is is like coach is going to do each and every day, or is it more of those tough drills that you do in the summer and early fall that is just a staple U of H? So probably we would put the bubbles on the rim, mm. um, and so we're gonna we're gonna cap the goals and make it to where every single shot is a is a miss, and we'll play five on five, and we call it double bubble. And that, look, you're going to run your offense. Um, okay. So you're trying to uh, score. So like, you, yeah, yep, you're, you're, you're actively. And so, like, the point yep. system is you, know, you get <clears throat> uh, plus two for an offensive rebound, plus one for a defensive rebound. Uh, if it's great execution and it led to a good shot, look, it's plus one. Okay. Uh, if uh, And then a turnover is minus one. Okay. And look, we may play to ten, and so you're 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 active running your stuff. You're running your, your secondaries. You're running your, uh, you know, all of your, uh, all of your actions and stuff. Shot goes up, shoot it to score it. You know, it's not going in, but jump up and shoot it to score it. And you know, look, we may go minus one for a vomit shot. Okay. Yeah. We yeah. <laughs> say with our drills, there's, <laughs> there's an act of God. Yeah. Uh, and there's only one God in the gym, and that's coach. Yeah, it's so, coach. Yep. Yeah, Vomit shot point, minus one. <laughs> look, at any point in time, they're, they're, look, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's an act of God. Yep. Well, that wasn't for mm-hmm. my two. Look, look, you don't argue with God, and you don't yep. argue with coach. So, yeah. uh, but we, we, we do that often, especially in the months of October. You know, is every, we are creating competition on every single shot. Love it. I can't say there's a lot of fouls called. Um, you know, and look, sometimes there's no foul calls. And we're just kind of letting them fight and figure it out. And, and um, you know, we may blow it dead on a jump ball. Jump always goes to the defense. Um, but it, it is about, de- you know, competition. And you're yeah. going to find out really quick. You know, I think that, look, as a coach, what you're always trying to do is you're trying to increase somebody's work capacity, workload. That's probably the scientific. Look, I'm trying to increase their quit level. You know, right. I, 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 I I got to increase the time that, it, that, that you finally tap out, that you quit. Right. And finally, if you, if you go far enough and they're competitive enough, they'll never quit. Yeah. You know, because right. you know, they're, they're not going to lose. I don't want right. to lose. I don't want, I don't want somebody else to beat me. Right. Uh, you know, we'll play that to 10 and, and losers, losers got to run and they got to run. I mean, we, what we call an NBA shuttle, which is a 65 second sprint. Okay. You know, baseline to opposite. Foul line and back, yep. baseline to baseline and back, and they got to do it three times. Yeah, you don't make it in sixty-five. Do it again. Going again. Yep. You know, losers run. Winners, winners clap. And uh, you know, there's there's there, there's a winner and there's a loser in, in in most everything that we do from say September all the way to game start. Right. And yep. you know, winner, winners winners you know, coach says it all the time. You know, winners win. Winners find a way to win. Yep. You know, and he, but he's not afraid to also say, "And losers lose. L- losers do this. Losers do the dumb things that get you beat." Yep, that's right. He's got that line. He says, "Look, dumb gets you beat, and that's dumb." <laughs> I love it. You know? Simple and to the point, Coach. I love it. <laughs> and, and you see a lot of dumb in our game, unfortunately. And you got to get, it, get it, you yep. it gets you beat. It gets you beat. It gets you beat. And, and you know, it, when he, we were in the NBA. You know, there's a conflict of interest, and in, and he says, "Look, players in the NBA are are paid to produce. Coaches in the NBA are paid to win. Mm. And so there's an automatic conflict. Right. There's not yep. one clause in a player's contract that's based on winning. It's all based on production. Right. You know, and 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 so he's got. You know, he's look. He said, look, you know, your job as an NBA coach is look. You you got to play the players." That you feel like in your gut and your soul are, are, are playing to win. Right. Right. Because it's your job on the line if you don't. Love it. Love it. 
Coach, I love this. This has been so great. Coach, I have uh, just one more question for you, you know, before we go. Uh, any advice for young coaches um, yeah. coming up? You know, it's, you know, you, you've been through so many battles, you know, at U of H and, and we're not all at U of H, you know, even for the lower levels, the high school level, junior high, there's going to be people who maybe watch this podcast and they all want to aspire, you know, to U of yeah. H, but any just advice for young coaches out there? I think that, you know, one of the things is um, the best time, to to advance yourself or to network or to grow is the summertime you know like coming to watch us at a game mm. like i don't have any time to network or or i got a million and a half things going um i wish i was better but 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 in the summer ask to come watch a summer workout okay you know um you know high school coaches look come in the summer and watch a summer workout because they got we got time to 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 sit and to talk and to, and you can ask a question, you know, and a lot of times, and I say this with, with, with full sincerity is um, if I was a young coach trying to get in probably the, the, the one, the head coach isn't who you're trying to make a, make an inroads with. Mm -hmm. you know, obviously you want to have familiarity with them, but look, it's the assistant coaches, you know, right. uh, pound the dog mess out of your graduate, out of the graduate assistants. Because in two and three years, those graduate assistants are going to be assistant coaches. Right. Pound the mess out of those video coordinators. Because those video coordinators in, in, in a year is probably going to be an assistant coach somewhere. Right. You know, pound those assistant coaches because those assistant coaches in a year or two years are going to be a head coach. You know, and spend time with, with, with the assistant coaches and the GAs and the video coordinators and ask questions and – and then when it's all over, write them a handwritten note. Everybody's so quick to email and, and you mm. know, or DM. Look, and those right. get dismissed pretty quick. Look, I get a sure. note that comes across my desk. I can um, I can guarantee you I'm writing you back. Mm. Look, if you took the time to write me, the least I can do is take the time to write you back. Right. Um, but young young coaches, you know, um, there's there's not a whole lot Chris Beard can do for you. You know, I should say this. There's not a lot Chris Beard will do for you. He's got 100 other people he's got to try to take care of. Yep. But there's a graduate assistant on that staff that's getting ready to be somebody that you're going to want to know. And Casey Perrin is as ready as anybody. And he's a graduate assistant at Texas. He's as ready to be an assistant coach as anybody in America. Mm. You know, Cole Rabideau on our staff is, is probably two or three years away from being a really, really good assistant coach. Mm -hmm. um, Casey Beard's on our staff is probably two or three years away from being a head coach. Qantas White could be a head coach. You know, he turned down a head coaching opportunity this year. You know, really, really take the time to, to get to know – the assistant coaches on all these staffs get to know the video coordinators on all these staffs and get to know uh, the GAs on all these staffs because they're they're 12 to 18 months away from from being somewhere that can really help you. Right. That's, that's awesome, Coach. Uh, Coach, I can't thank you enough. And you mentioned it, how busy you are. I know you guys are still doing all the things you're doing with the recruiting and, and you're so busy. Uh, uh, I, I really am honored that you came on our first no, ever Basketball and oh Brew podcast. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Ever. I'm thrilled. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah, oh, I didn't ruin it. No, coach, it's it, it's it's awesome. It's awesome. Well, I appreciate you, coach. Uh, love Houston. Love U of H basketball, and uh, look forward to catching up soon down the road. Of course. Anytime. Best of luck to everybody out there. Stay safe and um, stay in the gym. Okay. Thanks, coach. Yep. Okay, next week uh, we'll have our second podcast. We want to thank Kellen Sampson again. He's wonderful. So much to learn from Coach Sampson. Uh, U of H, the culture, the toughness. Uh, next week we'll be on with Blue, uh, head of Gasso, um, to talk about recruiting. And we'll talk about recruiting at all levels, not just Division One, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, Junior College, NAIA, um, and what the Gasso is all about. So we're looking forward to a wonderful podcast next week. Again, we would like to thank our sponsors. Uh, Zelix, uh, great place to go in San Marcos, Pie Society, excellent pizza and vibe. And thank you for everyone out there watching the Pie Society or the Basketball Improved Podcast. I'd like to give a shout out one more time to my producer, Jude McLaren. This is Dan Miller, Podcast One. We'll see you next week.